clarification. This is not an official town board meeting. Okay, it's an informational meeting strictly for those residents uh, that were approved by FEMA, approved by the town board to be into the FEMA buyout program. Okay? Um, I know one or two people couldn't make it tonight. Uh, let me just go down through the list to make sure everybody's here or we'll wait until 6. Tom uh, Runa. Tom. Uh, Michael White. Okay, he may not be here. Donna Bullen. Ed, you're here. Uh, Steve uh, Marcosha. Steve. Okay. Uh, Richard Kangwon. Fred Jones. Uh, Donald uh, and Deborah Geary. Uh, Rosalie Briggs. Anthony Vos. Hey. Right, how you doing? My name. Anthony. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mike. Pardon me? Mike White. Oh, that you're Mike White? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, Hillary Snuggles. We did have, um, I don't know if she's going here, I think it was uh, Morose. Actually, she just closed on a house today down there, so maybe she didn't get the information, but we will contact her. Okay, the meeting for tonight is basically just to go through the procedure, and mainly that's going to be... Why do something with the heat there, if you could, Danny? Um, Go through the procedure and mainly to focus on the appraisal process because that's what we're going to start with. All right. Then we'll get into any other questions uh, that you may have with regards to the program, and we'll try and answer them tonight. If we can't, we'll get a hold of FEMA and, and get uh, questions answered. For you. Got it, Andy? <clears throat> we'll get Jim if we have to. Jim. <laughs> all right. Right now. Our town attorney, uh, Herb Cully, um, and let me introduce everybody first. Councilman Dave Reynolds, Councilman Rich Woodland, Councilman Paul Michion, Councilman Jim Messa, our town attorney, Herb Cully, and our finance director, Dan Draymond. And I'm Pat Tuzinski, town supervisor, Rick Sherman, our highway superintendent. The appraisal process. Right now, we're putting together a uh, request for proposal. That's what our town attorney is doing. Um, by the time we get it done, by the time we get the responses in, hopefully we'll have them all in by the next board meet, meeting, which is September 13th. At that point, we'll, the board will approve, hopefully, an appraiser, and right after that, we should start our appraisers, uh, appraisals on the houses. Uh, we had one homeowner that was approved way back about a year or so ago. Uh, that has already been in the process, so they're going to be uh, the first ones to get their appraisal done. <coughs> After that, everything was uh, date stamped when the applications came in, so we went by date received, and um, we went by that order. Okay. You, unfortunately, are going to be towards the bottom. <laughs> All right. Special cases for new homeowners, and we'll get into that later on. The appraisal process. Once we get the appraiser on board, uh, you'll be notified as to when the appraiser will be coming out. Uh, if it's a bad time, then just tell Carol. She'll. Uh... Excuse me. Sorry to uh, interrupt. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, appraisal. 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 Appraisals. Okay. You'll be notified either by the appraiser or by my office, Carol Ryan. If the uh, date and time doesn't work out for you, just let her know. We'll try to get it rescheduled. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we'll give you enough time so that you could be there, uh, so we don't have to go out of order from what we've got here. How's the appraisal going to work? Well, it's going to be based upon, except for anybody who has recently bought the house within the last year or so, it'll be based upon the value pre-2011 storm, okay? Um, so what they will do, Herb, 
Well, well what they're going to do is they're going to look at comparable sales in the neighborhood of properties similar to yours. That's the only way that they're going to actually be able to ascertain a 2011 value. They may also inquire of you as to what damages you may have sustained and what monies you put in for repairs. Uh, but it's up to the appraiser, and they do this all the time, to give us a value, a fair value from before the 2011 right. period. So the comparables will be for many sales pre-August 31st, 2011, all right? With the houses that have been recently purchased, those valuations will be post-flood. So it's going to be a valuation post-flood 2011, all right? Plus any improvements to the house, and that goes for all of them. Once the appraisal is done, we will work up an offer uh, that will be presented to you as the homeowner. At that point, you'll have two weeks to either accept it or reject it. If you don't think that the appraisal is correct, you can go out and get your own appraiser. That will be at your cost. All right? If that appraisal that you get, if you decide to go that route, comes in significantly different than our appraisal, and what I mean by that, what they're saying is about a 15% difference. Then a third independent appraiser will come in and they'll compare to three. Now what happens? Let's take the example that our appraiser comes in at 100,000, you get an appraiser comes in at 120,000, and the third appraiser comes in at 115,000. The 115,000 will be taken. If the third appraiser in that same example, instead of coming in at 115,000, comes in at 130,000, they go with 120,000. Okay? So essentially, it's probably going to end up whatever one's in the middle is what happens. Okay? That's basically how the appraisals are going to work. We have some forms here, and just so you know, once once you accept the off and we have forms here that you're going to be asked to fill out. Any improvements that you've made during one of these uh, floods, whatever, okay? If you got reimbursed for it from another state, federal, county agency, insurance company, you've got to list it on there. And what happens is that's going to get subtracted from whatever the appraisal value is. So in other words, if you've got $10,000 from another federal program for damages that were to your house, uh, off this one, if the value taken was 100000 now you're down to 90000 However, if you have receipts for that $10,000, that will offset the minus of 10000 So in other words, if you had $10,000 worth of receipts, you got 10000 from a federal program, it offsets, we're back to the $100,000 appraisal figure. All right? Any questions at this point with regards to how the appraisal process is going to work? Because this is going to be the key. Once this is done, then it's basically all in the hands of the town, okay? Because after the closing, uh, <coughs> then it's our property. Then the house uh, property gets demolished. Uh, we do site work on it to uh, revitalize it, and that's it. Then it's ours for lifetime, okay? So any clarification on this? Now, one thing I want to make clear, um, because I'm not sure that it was clear with everybody. <laughs> this is going to work just like a regular house closing as if you sold your house to another third party, okay? Which means that when it comes to the closing, if you accepted an offer for $100,000, any mortgages, liens, etc., will be paid off first, okay? So if you had a $50,000 mortgage, no other liens on the property, etc., etc., the check to you would be $50,000. <laughs> So all those get paid off, back taxes, liens, mortgages, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Questions at this point? On your page? Just uh, because you were talking about the closing costs, if it's like a closing, who's? That's us. Okay. Okay. That's picked up through a grant program. Um, what you will be looking at is what you accept as an offer, less any of the liens that I just talked about, mortgage, taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And after that, goes to you. Closing costs are all taken care of under the uh, grant agreement. <laughs> you got a time for a real guy, 
We're looking as soon as possible. We got to move. I on. choose to go get my own my own assess, assessment on the property. You're still going to send an assessor out to do your own assessment, correct? That's right. Okay. We have to. That's part of the. Uh, and before you spend that money, you may want to wait and see, because the request for proposals that we're putting out, chances are we're going to get some pretty capable appraisers who are going to come in and do these, and, and most of them uh, do a really nice job. And these are not anybody no. that, that the town has used all the time. Like I said, we're going to put out a request for proposal, and it's basically going to be the, the most competent and, and price-worthy one that's out there. So. It's nobody that uh, is going to be working for the town that's going to give you a legitimate fair market value for your house. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of in a situation where last year I cited and put brand new windows on half of my house. And two weeks ago I had the rest of the siding dropped off of my house and ordered the rest of my windows that are due in next week. List it all down. So when the appraiser comes there, you can give them all that. So, I mean, I already paid a contractor to finish my house. What do I do? Put it on hold? Don't do it? Do it? I mean, my... Well, here's... I you know, I can't tell you, do it, don't do it. <laughs> here's what, what's going on. Again, you, you've been approved before, right? You, you just well, I mean, it. they denied us, so of course... No, 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 but I mean, you were but in But now before. I'm approved, but right. I got the letter two weeks after I just went right. and ordered... All but my, but my, your house appraisal is going to be pre-2011, plus any improvements. So it's up to you whether you want to improve, you know, continue. I mean, but I already paid for it, Paul, and it's non-returnable because it was all special order. Okay. Um, I've got to leave that decision to you. You know, whether, how much that's going to get added to the appraisal figure, I don't know. Herb, any uh, my suggestion would be that you hold off until you see what the appraisal is because if they're going to do a pre-2011, then you're going to provide receipts for what you've put in. If you're paying the contractor to come back and do additional contracting work... I mean, I, my house is half gray and half yellow right now because I'm a single mom doing as I can, what I can. Right. You know, so... So I'm, you're probably better off waiting until you see... This appraisal process is going to be quick. So just leave this out I would in my wait. backyard. Yeah, I want. Right. The only other thing is, as Pat said, if you've received funding from another source, in other words, if you had flood insurance no. and you put a claim in and you got that money, that's going to be deducted. Or if you qualified for additional funding through the state or federal, it. but anyone, know. that all gets deducted. Now By the way, that's Mary Pratt who just came in later. Right, I'm She's your county legislator. Thank you. But those are improvements that you should right. list when you right. fill out the form. I mean, yeah. I'm just like, like I went and ordered everything. I'm all excited, and then all of a sudden I'm like, get this letter. Hey, high five. Yeah. Well, make sure you Congrats. list it on the form. But yeah. Dave, my my feeling was, now she has material. She right. can document the cost. Well, well, assessors, the, assessors will usually take into the the guy. I do constructions. Right. Assessors will usually take into right. consideration that you're in the process of doing it. Right. What I'm saying is, if her contractor charges her ten thousand right. dollars to do half the side of the house, they may say that's excessive, and they may not credit her for the full ten thousand. Whereas if she's got material, there's no question. Right. Right, and you could probably save yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, Whenever I have all the receipts, and I have perfect. the envelope, you know, right. that's posted after. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I would so save that. that. Yeah. Yep. Save that, and the thing that is, is like Kurt said, at least what you're going to save is the cost of labor for having this done. Right. Okay, so even if you lose something on the siding because you already bought it, at least you're not paying somebody to put it up. Yeah, there's somebody changing there. That thing, yeah, 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 yeah. All key. No, if one, I, I had called, come and put it in the new on the van, which I got reimbursed to the foundation medicine. I heard from Oneida. No, I'll get that receipt. Yeah, right. Make sure you get there. You've got to list it, but then also show that you got the receipts. But also, two more music. A Bowman Valley committee I just come to look over the hot performance to see about putting in no furnace. Now my question is how long do we are we 
All right. We go via the what's the, what's the timetable here? The timetable we got to move on because this grant ends December 31st, 2018. Okay? So that's why when we had the board and the board passed this, we immediately, which was a week ago, uh, we immediately moved to set this meeting up because we're going to move right along on this. So, in answer to your question, Rich. So, should I get more information on Hydro now? Well, Pat, if you're talking a furnace, you probably should get the furnace installed. Yeah, because you're going to yeah, that's going through Mohawk Valley. That's why you want to know. It yeah. goes to a via to cold months. Yeah, you sure? Yeah. Because really more sure. than likely, we won't get through yeah. all these appraisals until winter hits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we're not, obviously, with one appraiser and the way the program works, they're not going to get all done within a week or two. Okay, we're going to get one or two done. We're going to go to the next ones, et cetera, et cetera, and move on down. Right. Okay. So when I, my hope me I should spend the money if it was going to be sooner than... Well, I think you're going to need it because yeah. the chances are yeah. we're going to go into it. And we're getting cold weather by the moment. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, are all the properties definitely going to be, should we all accept the offer? Will they all be purchased or are we going piece by piece mm -hmm. until you hit a monetary yeah. limit and then you stop? It's individual. So if you accept it and nobody else does, we buy your house. But it's possible for all of us to accept and all of us to get bought out? Yes. Okay. Second question was, once the offer is accepted, how long do we have to find an another living spot? Just like I said, it's going to be just like a closing on a house. The closing gets set up, okay, and sometimes closings happen in 30 days, sometimes they happen in six months, okay. Uh, I would think because there's no bank financing here, because this is all going to be federal money, they're going to happen relatively quickly. And I would say probably within a 30-day period at the most. Uh, so you're going to have that time period to find another place to go. Can we get uh, some kind of a letter of commitment so we can go to the bank and get a mortgage on the property here? In other words, we're gonna we're gonna accept the offer. Let's say. Yeah, you're going to have a shop for a house. Yeah, you're going to have a legal letter that's going to say, here's what we offer you. And, and let's just use the example I had, a uh, hundred thousand dollars. It's going to be in there. You sign off and say, I accept this. It's going to be a legal contract. Boom, it's done. There's your your proof that you want to bring to the bank saying you've got it. Okay. Yeah. Herb, uh, as far as the time for the closing, I think that's what you were asking. Uh, if some of you already have an abstract title, that will expedite the time of the closing to get, because the, the, we're very, very busy with real estate closings. Our office represents five lenders, and we can have anywhere from five to eight closings going on every single day of the week. So uh, the abstract companies, which will do the redate of the abstract title, are really backed up. They're backed up two weeks, three weeks sometimes. So theoretically, I think you're looking at 30 days minimum if you have your abstract of title to get that redated. If you don't have your abstract, it could probably take four to six weeks. Then you're looking at a couple weeks after that. So realistically, you're probably looking at six to eight weeks to close. Now, we also redate the abstract. We get a judgment search to make sure there are no judgments against you or anybody in the chain of title a bankruptcy search, and the big thing is going to be if there's an existing mortgage, that's a lien on the property. If there are back taxes, that's a lien on the property. If there's a mortgage, we have to contact your lender and get a mortgage payoff. That could take a week, two weeks to get the payoff statement. A lot of times what we run into is maybe when you bought the house, so the person you bought it from had a mortgage, that mortgage was supposed to have been paid off. It was paid off, but the discharge never got recorded. So there are little wrinkles like that that could add another couple of weeks. But I would think realistically, you're looking six to eight weeks if we don't have any wrinkles. Mike? On the post 9 11, on people who bought afterwards, that's my, myself, the, you, you explained that the value is going to be based on like pre sales. Before you know, pre 9 I mean, for everybody else except for, for oh, the yeah. three that were bought recently, and then it's going to be on sales or comparables after. Uh, so it'll we'll still be based on sales afterwards. Well, I would assume. I mean, the appraiser is going to do it based upon whatever they do. It normally is done on, on comparables, um, you know, plus inspection of the house, et cetera, et cetera. Any so, work that was done inside. Any work that was done inside. 
So make sure, you know, if there's things that aren't necessarily visible, make sure you keep all your receipts or dig them up, get them ready now for any of the work you've done to your houses. So you, you've got them ready. Yes. Um, we bought our house in 2011. We were there about six months until the first flood happened. Um, after that happened, we were told that FEMA might buy the property, and then we waited five years until it happened again, but for four years. But throughout that time, we were waiting. So like things like staining decks, um, you know, like just small maintenance things to make it look nice here with you. I pretty much just said, I'll leave it to this. There's no point putting anything. Should I run around and try to stay in the next now and make it look like a <laughs> Or would they be understanding and say, you know, we know If you were there for six months, you were there pre August 31st, 2011. Right. Right. You were there six months after the flood. December 2012. Oh, after the flood, six months after the flood. Yeah, so where do we call it? I got to check because the thing of it is, is that. Originally, all of the original applicants, I was told, qualify for the appraiser pre-August 31st, 2011. Well, let me check on yours and see. Yeah, Pat, they may okay, use their purchase say. price because it's so it's close in time right. to that date. So they may but, use the actual but that's purchase after price. The so I'm not so sure they want that. Oh, was it after the? Yeah, after the 2011. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure. But if you, you know, maintenance, I'm not sure that they're going to give you that much credit for. I'm not an appraiser. We don't have an appraiser here. Uh, but any structural stuff, um, yeah, cool. if you could dig up the receipts for it, obviously that's going to help. Okay. If you put the deck on, if you decided, if you put a roof on and whatever, okay, uh, dig up those receipts to your travels. Okay. Other questions? And how about land? Um, Say particularly you own a bunch of properties joining, and say there was 12 acres for sake of discussion, you just wanted to sell, the, do the house and a couple of them, and keep the other 10. What would, how would that work? You know, in other words, divide it up. Is it is it subdivided now? No. But I mean, that's a question I got to ask FEMA because I'm not sure. Right, I mean, would they want the house in all the property or? Well, I know we don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check on that, Steve. Right. Because I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to get that parceled out, right? Yeah, Steve. Right. It'd have to be subdivided, and I don't know if FEMA would let you subdivide it. I mean, my hope is they'd let you subdivide it because otherwise, all this land is is going to be left as a park or whatever. right. Right. Let me check with that, Steve, because the whole idea of the program is to help out people that had flooding with their houses and get the houses taken care of. So let me see if, if they can do that. <clears throat> to me, it makes sense, but again, we're dealing with state and federal government. Right, are you parceled out, or are you one tax bill? Uh, well, the, the multiple properties join it. No, but do you get one tax bill or two? Two. Oh, you get two. So okay. more than likely, you could take at least that one out yes. You know, with that other tax bill if, if the house isn't on it. So that would be easy. I don't know how much land that encompasses. But I will still get in touch with the uh, FEMA and find out. You're right, because they're more concerned about the, the home, not the house itself. Yes. 12 acres behind it. And I think the important thing is I think everybody is here to help you. So that if we run into glitches along the way, like that gentleman, whatever, we'll do whatever we can to try and help you. Okay. Right, cool. Mike? Yeah, I got one. Uh, basically, just a, a question that kind of relates for me anyway is at the last town uh, hall meeting we talked about uh, retainage and and, and and the things we talked about the last you talked about the last town hall meetings to, to curb this from happening in the future is th th those things are still in the making yes as a matter of fact the uh, the contract for Green Shell has been finalized I think I saw it is being sent for our engineer for final uh, approval on our engineer side, and um, that that will go to the contractor, and hopefully that will be starting in a few weeks. So if you don't accept the application, you can keep the house. The reason I ask that question is because you know I I I bought I bought the property with the understanding that the, the problem was remedied. You know that's what Bob told me. And, I believe him. You know, he's not completely, and I'm sure he you know, thought it was. You know, um, and you know, up until I got this call last week, 
which I think we got to do the same day. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, he knew that, you know, uh, I've known him for a long time, and I, I kind of felt awkward about it, but I was ready to revert the proper. I, you know, I, I, don't, I didn't really, I was debating whether or not to, to give it back, depending on what was going to go through, you know, with, with, with the, with the uh, you know, moving forward to try to remedy the situation. So, I'll tell you, um, I mean, this, I'm I didn't situation. plan this to be the venue, but since it does somewhat directly yeah. affect what you're talking about, uh, Grange Hill is moving forward. Uh, the, the top two ponds, I did have a meeting with the uh, uh, our engineers last Friday, and I told them that we got to get moving to get those bids out for the bottom half, and uh, hopefully they're going to be getting those to us within the next week or two so we can get those bids out. Uh, I'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> Uh, which would complete the Grange Hill project. The, the upper half, what we're calling phase one, and the bottom half that we're calling phase two, okay? Uh, hopefully these bids will come in, uh, and we get the permits, and it all gets done by the end of the year. Uh, I didn't mean to change order of business. I no, just, I had, I, no. It's legitimate because I was about to, I, I have very little investment. I was about right. to step out. You know, no, and I think it, it's probably for all the rest of the people that are in Chadwick's, it probably has uh, something bearing on what you might want to do anyway. Uh, we also discussed um, uh, the ravine up there also, for those people that live down on Oneida Street. So that is going to be looked at. I'm not saying it's going to be done. Uh, and, if, and if we do take it on as a project, I don't know when it'll be done. Uh, I would have to say that you know, if we do take it on, some of it will be done this year, but it, it totally won't be done. Yeah, it reminds me there, talk about doing some type of retention pond, like behind JK and the uh, Presbyterian Hall in back there. Is there any plans with that cooking? We, uh, the Mud Creek project, yeah. uh, which we had a study on a couple of years ago, we did do part of that, the lower part, which is down in New York Mills. We're still looking to do it. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, happened was um, the county was promised, therefore we were promised to get uh, state funding. And it hasn't shown up yet. Okay, I know the county executive, and I've talked to the county executive on a number of occasions. Mary, you might want to address this, but I know that he's pushing to get that money from the state and funnel it through so that we could move on that, uh, that Mud Creek project. Along with charities, let me tell you, that the county executive, that, that's like a prime thing for him, prime project. Yeah. Okay, he's told me that. So he's pushing to get uh, that state money in there so he can get it done. Okay. But nothing solid, right? Absolutely. Okay. Quick question, is there any yeah. other compensation for moving expenses? I was asked that before and there's nothing that I've seen so far in there, but I've got a question into FEMA just to make sure right. that there isn't. Because it's a voluntary move. I don't believe that it is because it is a voluntary sale yeah. and therefore uh, it's not. But just because I was asked that question from somebody else, I just wanted to make sure that yeah, there is. I have not seen anything in the program that shows that. But again, just so I could say, human said Other questions? Okay. okay. So we have two weeks to accept the offer, and then you're saying possibly 30 days after that? I'd say more like 45 to 60. Okay, good. I was going to ask what you're, you know, you're here to help. I, I understand that. What kind of leeway do we have? You know, we have to. Well, well before you much... talk to the attorney. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I, I got a beeline. Okay. <laughs> Let me say, okay, and, and we're not trying to throw anybody out of their houses in the court right. or whatever, but we're going to move on this. Okay. 45, 60 days, we're not going to work for this program. Okay. Because we got to be done. I say the grant ends at December 31st. We've been told you better make sure everything's done by the end of August, okay? So between now, that's a year from now, and we've got winter in between, and we don't know how these winter months are going to be, okay? So as we move, we're going to have to move quickly, all you right? You think that's feasible, though? I mean, honestly, with all the demolition? Yeah, we're going to get it done. Well, that's what I'm asking you know? then. So, so is, there, know, is there any leeway, like, you're going to say this is the day, or? It's going to be just like any other closing. Okay, if you sold your house to um, whoever, Danny Drymon, okay, if he gets his attorney moving and the attorneys say, okay, we're going to close in two weeks, that's it. 
Okay. And I'm not so saying there's, there's no leeway. That's the answer. 25 cents. Well, I'm not saying there's no leeway. You know, I mean, if it's a week or something like that, I'm, I'm sure we could work it out. But it's, it's definitely not going to be several weeks. Because, like I said, we've got to move on this. Uh, we don't know what the winter months bring around uh, our area uh, to get these houses uh, demolished. Uh, and it's not... And one more thing. It's not just, okay, <laughs> you close that house, you move out, and we send the, the truck down there and start knocking that. We still have to have... Uh, you know, investigations, examinations done for asbestos, chemicals, and I'm going to be giving out sheets here tonight, information sheets that you all have to fill out, and on there, and we'll go through it in a minute. But all of this, all of these properties are going to have to be tested, okay? So, you, you see, it's, it's even on an individual basis, it's quite a long process before, you know, and then we knock the, the, <laughs> the house down, and there's certain ways you knock it down, okay? Driveways, sidewalks. You can't just go in there and scrape it up and throw it in a truck. You got to lift it, okay? Ed, you're, you probably know about this. You got to lift it up so you don't disturb the ground underneath, okay? So there's all kinds of regulations as to how you demolish these buildings and, and revamp them into open space again, all right? So it's not as easy as like a normal demolition would be, uh, where you can just go in and knock it down. That's it. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions as to how the demolition gets done. That will all be put in the specs when we go out to bid to find uh, somebody to demolish these buildings. Other questions? Well, I just, can I say something? I think it, this is a little different because if you were selling your house to me, you normally wouldn't do anything until you were sure if I had to inspect it for structural radon. You'd wait until those inspections were done. You'd wait until I got my mortgage commitment before you'd proceed. In this case, we're going to proceed right away. So, I mean, if, if you got an offer and you think it looks good, you should start looking right away as to where you're going. Oh, you yeah. Um, yeah, because basically, you're not going to get turned down because you got asbestos. Okay? No, we're going to demolish. Because we're going to have to take care of the asbestos. It'll be done through the grant program. So, just dump okay. sir. There's no monetary cap then, so because FEMA doesn't have any sense for what these what this these 15 or 16 houses are going to raise for. Well, let me put it to this way: and when I say there's no cap, there's there's basically two programs involved here. They both work the same. The forms are the same. For you, it matters not. Okay. The only one it really matters to is our finance director because he's got to keep separate records on it. Okay. The FEMA program, which covers, I think, six houses, is a million, sixty thousand, something like that. And the state, which covers the remainder of the houses, the seven houses, is a million, a little bit over a million, too. So it's two point million dollars. Okay? I'm hoping that on these 14 houses, we're able to uh, give you offers that you, that you accept and that there's more than enough there to take care of any re uh, remediation that has to be done. Is this a, like a one-time deal? In other words, say the appraiser you're, it comes in and you're like, eh, I don't know. And then you, you wait for the, the project to go through. I wouldn't wait. And then if it, in other words, the, the new piping goes in and everything, and it floods again. You're like, I should have took that off. Or, you know, but, or, this is my personal opinion, Steve. I wouldn't wait. I mean, it's a decision that you're all going to have to make now. I'm not saying it's the only program that, that FEMA is going to come out with. Right. They have another program out now. This is the only one that, that covers 100%. Okay? Normally, there's 75%. So, yeah. you know, now you just, you know, locked off a quarter of what you would have gotten under right. this program. Right. Okay? So, chances are, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to say because I know you did a lot of improvements. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, chances are for the normal person, if you lop off that 25%, you know, you're losing a lot of money. Yeah. You know, so if you're going to take it, now's the time to take it. Right. You get 100% at this point. You just, I'm just, I'm confident that that, you know, the whole retention ponds and that that project's going to work, and then so hopefully it all works. And uh, but if it didn't, you'd be like, oh, I should have taken that. You know? <laughs> should have taken it and ran the new, the, you know, the new now, project didn't work. There's been a lot of effort put into the design of that project. Right, so hopefully it goes through and works properly. More than hopefully, it should work. Uh, any other questions? 
I got a question, I guess, it just relates yeah. to probably just me because I'm the newest. But obviously, my name's on the list, so it might sound like a foolish question. But did, did, is there, um, did you get verification that it, the application that Bob put in is transferable to me? Yes, the only thing is you got to fill out another short form application, which uh, Carol will get in touch with you, and you just got to fill it out. So it's your name and not Bob's name. Okay. Who else? Was one of the other new owners here? Okay, because we'll contact those people, and they've got to do the same thing. Okay. okay. So there is a little bit more paperwork you've got to do, just so it fills it all out, name, you know, all that other stuff to make it easy. So there's 14 houses, like you said. You're you're trying to get done. To, I'm, you know, if I'm dead last, I don't care. I'm not living there. You know what I mean? So believe me, I, I understand. Um, but with the four, four, I, I'm like on, uh, uh, I'm like on the same page as Steve. Was, you know, if I don't walk away, I'm debating whether to just keep it and you know, hopefully that everything else works out. But I just that's something. That, uh, at least I have more time to think about actually if I'm the last guy on the. So. <laughs> right. right, you'll have a little bit more time. All right. I, have to Man, no. I just want to add something for you. Um, getting relating back to the appraisals, everybody was asking you questions about the deferred maintenance. That's what it's actually called for uh, properties that are not finished. Um, the appraisers that come out are going to do an actual standard appraisal that's approved by the Appraisal Standards Board. And, and that appraisal is going to be like if any other house. So if you have unfinished things on your house, there's a little line that says down in the bottom, deferred maintenance, and he has to check that. He takes a percentage off for deferred maintenance. So if stuff's not done and not complete, if it's not a complete home, like if you have a house and it doesn't have a furnace in it, he's got to, he's got to deduct for that. If you don't have siding on your house or one side of your roof is totally dilapidated, that will be a deduction in their appraisal. Now, if, if FEMA is going to do something different after that to take something into consideration, they might, but the actual appraiser itself can't take that into consideration. I mean, but I have the material. Right, but if, if it's and not... It's like everything was... My receipts are post-dated two weeks prior to the high five letter. Yeah, no, and, and, and FEMA might give you credit for that, but if the house is not complete when the appraiser comes out... I mean, or, I still have the siding and the windows in there, obviously, but, right. you know, I'm, my windows are due on September 4th. Right, but you got to remember, Paul, they're, they're doing pre-2000. Yeah, they're doing pre-2000. Oh, right, I'm so just saying does, completion. So, so what Paul's saying is only for those people, like you, Mike, that bought afterwards, mm -hmm. or you folks. And i got to check on you anyway, because I think you're with the pre-2011, but I'll, I'll check. So really what Paul's saying for a regular appraisal, I'm sure it's true. Uh, but for most of you, uh, again, they're taking the pre-2011, so a lot of this probably isn't going to be into consideration. Uh, plus, FEMA does step in and, and make adjustments on these things. So the appraisal goes to FEMA? Well, they're going to look at it, yeah. Oh, okay. And then they may make they have adjustments. To, right. Yeah, they get it. Oh, okay. All right. Any other questions on the appraisal? Okay. I've got a form here. I'm going to hand it out. Uh, Ted? Mike, uh, Donna, uh, we'll go through this in a minute, uh, Steve, Richard, Herb, you got a copy of this, right? Fred Jones, yeah, uh, let's see. Gary's. There's one feature. Rosalie Briggs. Uh, Anthony Goss. This one's new. Okay. Where's my town attorney? Um, all right, we're just going to go through this that way. If you have any questions, and our town attorney's here, you could ask him. Uh, if you look at the first one that I'm looking at here, it's the Hazardous Materials Property Survey, Individual Property Survey form. And you've got to answer all these questions, okay? The first question is, is or was a property used for governmental, commercial, light industrial, or industrial activities? 
Okay, yes or no answer. Are any above ground storage tanks, underground storage tanks, or leaky, leaking underground storage tanks present on the property? And, a, and, a, and you, you don't have to think of a gas station because I know years ago people used to put their oil tanks yeah, underground. Very underground. Okay, uh, so they didn't have to put them in their basement and stuff. So you know any of that stuff has to be listed on this application here. Okay, and please, if you know about it, uh, put it on here because it, it's it's always worse when you when you don't put down what you know is true because it's all going to be inspected anyway. Uh, at any time, has any generation treatment, storage, disposal, release, or spill of petroleum products, solid or hazardous substances, or waste, include pesticides, herbicides, and roticides, occurred on what is now your property, other than normal quantities of household substances? So in other words, if you're spraying for ants or, or something, bees outside, they're not looking for that, they're looking for large quantities. At any time, has a as a transportation facility to include parking lots, railroad yards, or railroad or roadway uh, right away been present on what is now your property. Have you noticed any unusual odors or discolorations in your drinking water? <coughs> At any time has any environmental investigations been conducted by federal, state, or local agencies or private firms or any environmental or occupational safety and Health Administration OSHA. Citations or notices of violation have been issued regarding what is now your property. Uh, the last one uh, is just your certification saying that uh, you basically uh, told the truth and then you sign off on this. Um, if you had somebody prepare it, they sign it, then the property owner sign it. Uh, there's instructions here that everybody should have with regards to this uh, in case you have any questions. And then the last one is just an affidavit. I, we, uh, depending on how the house is titled, uh, affirm the following, that we own the real property. They want to make sure that you're the, the legal owner of the property. Uh, and now we get down to what I was talking about earlier. Uh, I have, we have received the following structural repair assistance funds as a result of flooding that occurred on. And then you list what date it was and whether you've got flood insurance, disaster housing program insurance, it's all listed here. State individual or family grant, hazard uh, minimization grant, small business administration loan, other. So anything that came from a governmental agency or insurance company, you've got to put on here, okay? Um, then you just certify that I have received no other assistance, funds for structural repair, or I cannot uh, produce receipts. Um, now it's just down here. Can you produce receipts if you can't put the dollar amount in? Then you sign it, and this has to be notarized. Okay? The questions on any of this, any of the appraisals? Um, again, as far as you homeowners are concerned, uh, with the exception of the new owners, because you'll have to do a little bit more paperwork, Mike, to get that application in, and I'll take care of working on it tomorrow. But other than that, all we're dealing with here now is the appraisal. That's all you're, you folks are going to be concerned about. Okay? Whether you accept it, don't accept it, then we might get into the second, third appraisal situation. But other than that, um, that's all you folks have to worry about. All right. Once you accept it, we have the closing, then everything else that needs to be done, we take care of. Okay. So really the only thing you've got to be concerned about at this point is the appraisal process, filling out these forms, et cetera, et cetera. Pat, when do you need this stuff back by? We'd like to have it back as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Does it go right to your office? Yes, you can drop them off right at, uh, upstairs uh, on the top floor with my secretary, Carol Ryan. Just drop them off uh, if you would. Question? We got it. Any other questions before we wrap this up? I need to speak to your lawyer. Is he still here? Yeah, he's here. Yeah, time for questions? Sure. So, I, I took an SBA. Uh, loan, but I've been paying it back. So why would that come against me? Well, it's got to be paid off. What what we're acquiring 
is property free and clear from any liens. So what do I put down as a dollar amount? What I have left on it? Yeah. What's up? Thank you. Hi, Fred. <laughs> any other questions? Okay. There's some sheets up here when you leave. It's got contact information. Uh, my phone number up here. It's 733-7500. Hit option one. Hit option two, that'll get you to Carol Ryan, the secretary, my secretary. Um, she's here Monday through Friday from 8 to 4. If you have any questions related to her, I would appreciate it. We would appreciate it, though, because the email address is on here. If you do have a question, please email it. That way there's no confusion as to what might have been said on the phone, what wasn't said on the phone, etc. Uh, and that way, if you email it to us, and it's something that we can't answer, we can uh, forward it to uh, FEMA and get an answer for them. Any other questions? So you don't have the date or the order. Our next step, we're going to hear from an appraiser. We don't know why. Want to hear the order? Yes. Yes. Okay, the first one is the property 3506, which has been in process for a year, so we're not going to put a hold on that. Uh, the th second, uh, number two, is 3532 Oneida Street, so I don't even have to read off names here. Mike, you would have been if it was Bob Corr, but uh, unfortunately we don't have your application here. It's my life story. Okay. 3562 Oneida Street will now be the third. Six Woodbury will be uh, the fourth. Um, Steve, if you jump into it, you're going to be down actually above or below, probably be the same time as Mike, okay? Um, okay, so where are we? Let's see, one, two, three, four. Fifth would be 3528 Oneida Street. Sixth, uh, one Maplewood Road. Uh, seventh, uh, 7th and 8th would be 10 and 11 Henderson, or 10 and 12 Henderson, I'm sorry. Uh, the next one would be 6 Henderson. Uh, the one after that would be 3524 to 3526 Oneida. Um, and then, uh, except for the newly closing ones, uh, you would be next. 3520. Okay. So that's basically where we're going going. Uh, with regards to, again, the timeline on this, as soon as we get approval, uh, which will be at the September 13th meeting, um, uh, board meeting, uh, we're going to get, uh, and I'm going to ask our town attorney to put in there that uh, we would like these appraisals to begin right away. So when we get the uh, proposals back, uh, we're hoping that uh, it may not be on the 14th of September, but within a week. We're going to get these appraisals started, so we get moving on. All right, and they will move along quick. Okay, we are going to push them. Any other questions? Okay, I want to thank you all for coming. Again, if you have any questions, uh, the contact information is up here on a sheet. Uh, pick it up, um, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to call me. Uh, that number will also get you uh, to any of your councilmen also, so if you want to talk to your councilmen. All right? Thank you. Good night. And uh, we'll be in touch.